Uh, I think I have uh, 10 minutes maybe to finish my one hour talk. <laughs> but it's OK. This, a lot of things that we kind of review already. So we can do real quick. OK, just basically this is showing you the difference between we call the 3D, this kind of uniform. And the MRT, what we can do is you can have a different intensity. That's what you see on the film. Can you see it? Hopefully you can see it. This is where you see on the film each slice. Each grade is like a one centimeter by one centimeter. This is the old Noble's pickup treatment planning you see in this way, this MRT. So MRT basically we go through all this from the conventional. Dr. Yukov has uh, talked about it. We use in the old days we do this conformal already, and then nowadays actually we still using compensator, both in our institution, in on NINEC, especially on the proton therapy. When we have the proton treatment therapy, we still using compensator very often. Actually, for each patient. All the patients using compensator. OK, so that's still kind of MRT, because you basically adjust the intensity inside the field. You have a different level of the fields, OK? And then, but it's easier to do the MRT using the uh, MLCs. And this MLC has to be computerized MLC. And the, the MLC is a different way. I just showing you the pickup, you know, all the tomotherapy. That's basically the binary <coughs> concept. And then you can do cyber knife. That's much, much complicated. Okay, we are not going to talk about. It. We also doing use this using a scanning beam. Okay, that's where you use in the scanning beam for proton to the IMPT. Okay, intensive modulation proton treatment. So nowadays, we can adjust the beam. Unless you do MPT, you won't be, won't be able to get uh, those distribution that they want to. OK, show you, hopefully I can show you something. See if it works. I want to show you some of uh, this uh, different way to deliver this MRT by using step and shoot, sliding window, and the VMAT, OK? So whatever the last talk you, you have, is something like this. Okay, basic step and shoot. It's just like he shows like a, we call the poor man, like a four, three uh, segments. Usually we have a much, much more segment to be used for step and shoot. This is like a, we have like a 14 segment. Okay, starting with this, see this small opening? And this kind of, this goes anywhere he wants to. Okay? And to deliver the dose. Okay? That's called a step and shoot. And this is called a sliding window, which means the leaf has to go only one direction. Not step and shoot, they can go anywhere they want to. Okay? This is called a sliding window. Watch out, this leaves go only this direction. Okay? See the radiation goes only one direction. This is a more look like what the Yukov just showing you the way to generate this leaf sequencing. We call the leaf sequencing to provide this kind of, we call the sliding window delivery, okay? This is the way you can deliver. All this code, now we, we can even use the VMA. VMA meaning during the, during the leaf motion, you can move the collimator or you can move the gantry at the same time. This is just try to simulate. It's very hard to simulate when you move the gantry and move the simulator and move the column at the same time. See, this is opening at a certain gantry angle. Then you're just doing this. But supposedly, if this is what you want to deliver, you can move the gantry and the column at the same time where the leaf is motion. Okay? This is called the VMAT. or a different name I'm going to talk about, OK? And why we need to do MRT? The motivation, I think, uh, last slides, we, last talk, we discussed. What's the main reason from 3D, 2D to 3D, from 3D to MRT? It's basically, you can see the dose distribution from the 3D, and this is the MRT, OK? You can see the dose to the product is much, much lower. If you use the 
3D, this on this uh, letter side usually end up hard spot, but then you get a full dose to your product, okay? Another thing is, watch this, those curve, you can curve even like a concave shape, okay? You cannot use this, you cannot achieve this by using 3D unless you use multiple, multiple beams, just like we did exercise uh, last Friday, or you have to have a m more beams, and you have to do another poor man modulation, okay? So in order to protect these critical structures, then you end up using MRT. Otherwise, you cannot get those higher. You get a complications. Is that right? The last talk, okay? Basically, what you have is 3D. You end up having this uniform dose basically inside here. But when you do the in intensity modulation, you have different shape at a different location. See, in order to avoid your this uh, either spinal cord or your rectum, if you're treating the, uh, the, the prostate, you can make this intensity a little bit lower here. See it? Intensity a little bit lower here. Intensity a little bit lower here so you can avoid those to the critical structure. At the same time, you get this uniform dose to your target, okay? Real quick, I don't really have time to really, really go. Okay, so that's the summary, okay, for the benefit of MRT. It's over here, okay, you can read, I don't really have time. <laughs> okay, then the, basically we do the forward planning, this is what are we gonna do. Basically we decide the beam come from where, and then we calculate the dose. You can move this different angle position, you can give different weighting, try to get a dose. But no matter what, you end up get a uniform dose. The goal for the 3D is get a uniform dose inside whatever your beam aperture, okay? But for the inverse planning, this is where we, instead of give prescription from here, we give prescription from here, meaning how much dose to the target, and uh, how much dose, the maximum dose to the critical structure. You give the prescription over here, and then you decide what is your feel looks like. So that's called the inverse planning, okay? Real quick, I don't really have time. Okay, so you have a different way to do this, we call the inverse planning, okay? The basic way to do the inverse planning, I think we've discussed the last talk. We use this, we call it like a pencil bin, or we call it a bin leg, or we call it a pencil bin. I hope I can, I think uh, Dr. Yukov has discussed last talk, talk already. I probably spend a little bit more time talking about the DAO, direct aperture optimization. Okay, so this is called a bin leg. I think we have to go through this already. Uh, basically, for each small field, the calculated dose goes through this, okay? For each, this small grade, those grade either one centimeter by one centimeter if your ML is one centimeter width, but most likely right now we have a five millimeter by five millimeter. So each five millimeter you define your target, then you can define the shape I think you have this last talk about. And then you calculate this dose and you calculate. Remember the last talk, all this DI, different weighting things. And then you end up determining for each dose grade, what's the best weighting, relative weight, so that you can create the dose, okay? When you see this, then you end up, you create it from this uh, dose grade, you end up to see what is your uh, leaf openings, okay? And uh, you need this, we call it, based on the intensity, this just gives you those grades. But actually, this intensity could be like a, an, like a curve, like a continuous curve, correct? This we call the open density matrix or, or whatever it is, fluorence. This fluorence is like a continuous. Then you have to generate this. We call the leaf sequencing. Last top we show you, is that right, a kind of sliding window? The last talk, you can leave the, the leaf where you open. This, this is called a two step, okay? First, you generate idea of foreign map that you can deliver those, but then you need to generate this, uh, what we call the deliverable. Deliverable, MLC, this is called the leaf sequencing. You need a different program, there's a different way to generate. But the problem is once you generate this deliverable MLC, what happened? you calculate back 
the dose, the dose will be different from whatever you have from the ideal fluence, correct? That's the problem, okay? So you generate this very small field. This relatively very small, okay? So the final dose is calculated from all this small segment, or some people call the control point. Then you end up what? When you see from this ideal fluence, it's not what you get from your small dose calculation. You lose it. So basically you need to go back and forth to change your prescription again in order to cheat the treatment plan system, cheat the algorithm so that you can get what you want. You still need to cheat it because once you do this conversion or do this leaf sequence, you have a problem. i show you all this. At the beginning, when, we, when you do these two steps, uh, do I have? When you're doing these two steps, see all these fields, very, very small, relatively very small. See it? These very small openings, this is where the field. When we first start doing this MRT, our physicians don't want to try it because they say in the old days, 3D conformal therapy. We always ask our physicians, say the smallest field you can have is four by four or three by three. Right now, he say, all the field you give to me is less than three by three. How can I treat? You always told me that if field smaller than three by three, we have uncertainty that we don't know what's the dose. Now all the fields are by three by three. So at the beginning, they don't want to try. Okay, you need to make sure your dose is correct. But anyway, watch out. This is starting. Uh, this is where we first started. This is called a bin lag. This is called a modulation. See, from, it's like using the sliding window concept, but it's step and shoot. So we end up have like an 83, 84 control point, meaning for this particular field, we have a 42 small fields. We generate this from ideal fluence map. Remember the last talk, we see every 10% those difference, you divide the 10% so you create a sliding window, but 10%, that's a big difference, you see what I'm saying? So if you want to get a more accurate, then you end up use 5% or 4%, but uh, you have, uh, if you reduce the percentage, meaning you need end up more segments. But the more segments, you end up more smaller fields. You have a jeopardy. You see what I'm saying? You don't know what to do. So all these smaller fields can generate to get this final dose. See, that's the problem. So we talk about you have this leakage. You don't know this dose is uncertain. Is that right? You have this different leakage. You have this, how much opening? There's some gap. There's a lot of, uh, we call a mechanical limitation or a mechanical uncertainty to cause you those distribution, whatever you see, is not what you get, okay? So this is the planning process. So you have to go back. If the dose is not good, if it doesn't happen, you go back to change your bin angle or change your prescription. Hopefully, after you do this optimization, after you do this uh, leaf sequencing, after you do this final dose calculation, this meet your goal, meet your prescription. If not, you go back. If you're not, you go back. This is the, we call the two step. You end up as a problem, okay? So, uh, this is, yeah, just the history. So, in, instead of doing that, we do this called a direct aperture optimization, okay? What happens is once you generally starting MLC that you can deliver, this is called deliverable segments, then you can somehow during this process, you can optimize your leaf shape and your leaf each bin segment, the, where the leaf will be, and each segment, what the bin weighting should be, but at the same time, you can calculate the dose. So you are not optimizing the fluence. You are optimizing the bin weight and the bin shape. See what I'm saying? This is called a direct aperture. You, you, uh, you, you optimize the aperture instead of you optimize the fluence. Fluence is just out somewhere you cannot deliver. Okay? But this is something you with your machine parameter or you use your maybe compensators, 
Okay, condensate could be like a one centimeter condensate or could be two centimeter condensate, whatever the size, but that's what you want to deliver. This is deliverable opening, deliverable aperture that you do the optimization. So at the end, what do you have? What do you see is what you have, okay? So this is called the direct aperture optimization, DAO. I don't know if I have time. I just give you the concept. You can go back to read, okay? I, I, the most familiar system I have is called the Pinnacle, and this is using, we call the DMPO. That's why they call it called direct machine parameter optimization, meaning they optimize this direct deliverable MLC instead of just the fluence, okay? Because fluence cannot deliver, okay? Uh, I don't really want to use your, just give you some concept, okay? The reason we can do that is you, you first define how many segments you, you want for each beam angle, okay? So let the system decide what's the best. Uh, so begin with this uh, maybe simplest way, okay? Just begin, maybe if you just say for this certain beam angle, I only want a three aperture, only three aperture, just like a, MRT, but then you let the computer to do it for you. So the system first define this spinlet, okay? And then assume these three uh, aperture has the same identical opening, three. And then you do the optimization. You move your leaf, okay? Maybe say move in or out. So you can move this particular, any, you choose randomly, any particular leaf. Okay, you move in or out, meaning you optimize this uh, uh, location of the leaf, and at the same time, you optimize your beam weight, and then you determine after they moved, the calculate those. You determine is this move good or bad, okay? If this move bad, meaning you reject. If it is good, you keep, okay? Depends on whether you have this, you meet this MLC constraint, meaning how fast it goes, okay? Or can they hit each other? And then depending also the cost the function, okay? Meaning you make the cost function, you make the penalty lower, you make cost function lower, then you keep continue. If you make the cost function higher, meaning this move is not good, so we reject. Okay, just keep trying, okay? Also talking about a linear rule, uh, and then in, maybe we just passed it. <laughs> so this just give you maybe some constraint. You, you need to meet this constraint in order to, to give. This is like an electron that say you don't want to hit. The each leaf don't want to within one centimeter. Even the next leaf don't want to. Why we don't do that? Because we don't want to cause this leaf collision, okay? Sometimes you have this calibration error, leaf collapse, and then you, can, you have like a car head and head collision, then the, the collimator will break down, then you cannot treat the patient, okay? So this is just safety. And then you end up several iterations, you end up some these three segments. See what I'm saying? Uh, and then this is the DAO, I don't really have to, okay? The take home message is you don't really need a too many aperture like what I show you, the sliding window, you only need a few openings, few aperture, because this just give you a sample. If it's only like a three aperture per angle, just like I'm showing you, you can end up have a seven different way to deliver, different weight. So this is based on this formula, okay? So if you have a three aperture, you have a seven intensity to modulate. If it's like a four aperture, you have a 15 intensity to modulate. Okay, based on it, so it's very easy. So this is just binary, okay? So you don't really need more than 10 <laughs> aperture for each beam angle. If you have more than that, meaning, see so this 63 million is how many dose difference? 2%, is that right? You don't really need more than that for each beam angle, okay? So if you use 10, it's enough, usually, okay? Unless you end up with a complicated plan. Uh, let's just take a home message. So use this, you don't really end up, you really end up smaller aperture with 
relatively large field and with better dose distribution. I don't have time. This is the DMPO, you know, from the system. The way you can do MRT, uh, see this is the optimization. The way you do MRT, you can DMPO, you can do intensity modulation. That's what I said, you do two step. Okay, once you do this DMPO, this DAO, you don't want to do intensity modulation. You can also do segment weight, all this stuff. So basically, you, you, the operator gives the system how many total segments for this particular patient. If you have like a nine angles, this is like a 15 aperture. This is a, what's the maximum film, what's the maximum number of the, minimum number of the MU to do it. Okay, this is like operator defined the field size. Uh, all these parameter uh, we can talk about. Okay, so this is give you the end result. For this particular beam angle, so this relatively smaller number of the segments, only like a 13 foot for this one. This is a complicated one. But for this one, you end up, I'm showing you this is end up, you have a too many segments. How can you tell? Because see this MU, what's the number here? Can you see? Only two, is that right? Why this goes to two? Because when you define at, at the beginning, you say for each segment has to more than two MU. So this treatment plan system wants to reduce, reduce, reduce. When they reduce to two, they cannot go in down. Actually, you limited optimization. They stop at the two. See what I'm saying? So that's indication. If you allow of these two MUs, meaning you end up using, you asking too many opening, too many segments. This kind of waste, see? Okay. Uh, so uh, really quick, we evaluate what's the, whether it is a good system. Anyway, uh, this just give you a summary. Okay, compare with whatever we have before, using two step, four and then deep sequencing, and then you compare with the DNPO. Our experience is the plan quality will be much better. If you compare the total cost of function, the penalty, we reduce almost 50%, much better. And the treatment delivery is much better because total treatment monitoring units, we realize can reduce more than 40%, and the number of segments, we can reduce more than 50%, okay? What means by reduce total monitoring units? Meaning your treatment is more efficient. You use less MU, you achieve the same goal. So you give the more, less being on time. So you feed the machine longer life, correct? What happened to the segments? You have less segment, meaning you have a more longer life for your MLC. Because MLC is controlled by the motor, you cannot save your motor life, okay? So this can, and the, use the less segment, meaning you deliver the treatment with less treatment time, more efficient, okay? Uh, I don't think I want to talk about this. So basically, then we go to the, the VMAT. Uh, so I don't think I have time to talk about VMAT. Uh, uh, I think we just finish here because we don't want to <laughs> over your, your, your break time. But I'll be here if you want to, you have questions, uh, I'll be happy to answer you. But uh, then you're free to have the break, okay? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you.